Welcome, I'm Shad Johnson. Um, you're probably watching this because you're in the industry and you're kind of wondering uh, what is going on with the marketplace. Well, um, I've got this report um, as a member of the NKBA, um, this uh, John Burns Research and Consulting uh, Kitchen Bath Market Index, as you can read there. Um, and I'm going to dig deep into this and find out and share with you what is going on with this, this market. Now, this is second quarter, by the way. First of all, um, here's just the different segments that have contributed to this report. 392 participants um, in these four different segments of the industry. So to give you just a quick snapshot. It says here the demand conditions are choppy um, and shifted down. So first of all, I'm not an economist. I am not um, a market analyst. Um, this is not what I do for a living. I am a kitchen designer, a certified kitchen designer. I've been doing this for 30 years, as I mentioned. Um, I'll be 30 years in just a couple of weeks, actually. And I've been through um, many, many um, variations or volatility in the marketplace. Um, you know, whether you talk about, um, you know, not, uh, of course, 9-11, but before that, um, Y2K, um, you know, you talk about um, 2008 um, with the Great Recession um, and certainly um, COVID, both the, the down and gigantic up of COVID. And now this year, which um, I'm just going to throw out a few things that are happening that you might no, or factors in what's going on. There's certainly the the uh, wars uh, that are happening in the world between um, in Ukraine and in Israel. <clears throat> um, the, the you know the situation with the, the Suez Canal um, uh, shipping um, situations there. You've got now the the dock dock workers strike happening right now in the U.S. Um, interest rates or um, or uh, inflation. Um, the presidential election, which causes a lot of um, pause in a lot of investing and um, uh, plans in projects. And then, of course, um, Hurricane Helene that just hit the uh, southeast U.S. just recently. So all of those factors on top of the normal factors contribute to what decisions people make on, on the projects that we in our industry work on. And I'm assuming that a lot of you are from the industry and so you're watching this because maybe you're just pondering <laughs> what is going on um, in the industry so i'm going to just share a couple of thoughts i have number one um the demand in the industry this says demand conditions are choppy i'm going to just say the demand or the need for housing is still very strong i was going to find a report before i got in here but many of you probably already know um, that um, in my my uh, market in utah um, we are 40,000 residential units under the demand. I am sure if you find out or look up in your state, um, I'm going to guess most states are in that situation because uh, our market has a pent up demand um, of, of need for housing. OK, so I'm not going to go into a lot of depth in here, just going to um, hit um, just a few um, factors that I want to bring to your attention. OK, so. Um, so the, this this is interesting here. I, I noticed this talking about on the retail side. Um, I'm just going to state, as we talk about a few times throughout this report, that I believe since this was second quarter, third quarter is even worse. Um, because, again, we've got all the factors I, I mentioned um, a moment ago, but also the presidential election isn't happening until next month. Um, and so um, as we get closer, then decisions get slower in my experience over, I think this is my sixth presidential election in my career. Now, many of you have had more of those in your career, so you know better than I do um, that as well. But I'm just sharing with, with, with you with what I've seen. And then, of course, where we think this is going to go, right? <clears throat> so I don't think that we need a whole lot more of this stuff other than, yeah, of course, it's uh, the, the sales have weakened. Um, now, the middle market being missing. This is interesting because, um, you know, the, the high end uh, industry, the, the, the cash industry where people are buying second, third and vacation properties, investment properties um, that's being done with cash. It's not it's not typically affected by, um, by the, the mortgage industry. So that's the reason why that segment's still strong. There's a lot of wealth and a lot of money in the marketplace. Um, on the low end, you still have the demand for housing. So people are still um, investing in rentals, knowing that they can either buy uh, and invest in um you know, whether it be townhomes or maybe even apartment complexes or condo um, units and then turn around and sell them when the market improves and even homes, um, single family homes as well. Um, so, uh, you know, 
you know, this I, I'm in the Southwest talks about how there's still strength here. Yeah, there's you know, there's a lot of move uh, moving happening into our market in, uh, in migration happening from um, well, that's in migration migration happening from, say, California, um, you know, and other parts of the country coming to our state, as many of you know, the, the Western U.S. Um, experience this as well. Um, so. Um, <laughs> What is what is the 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 things that are slowing down the market, right? The, what are the top constraints? Uh, consumer uncertainty being number one. Okay. Now the reason why uh, uncertainty, as you know, is um, uh, unknowns in the marketplace um, are something that the industry doesn't like. Uh, the consu consumers and investors and the market in general does not like uncertainty. And so um, with the things I mentioned earlier, those things are factoring into the uncertainty. Skilled labor uh, um, availability. Um, I'm working on a very large project right now where the project is going much slower than they had planned. And I think it's because they simply cannot find enough skilled labor to get the job done fast enough. Material costs, yes, of course. And we know that those have kind of, the, the growth has slowed down. They're still high, but the prices are not going up necessarily right now. And then, of course, weak home sales, and that's due primarily, primarily to the mortgage market. So I don't want to spend a lot more time on this page just because there's a lot to get to. Um, but I do want to just highlight a few of these factors. OK, um, so revenue growth expectations. So I'm just going to tell you what I what I suggest here in Q2 2024. Here's what the expectations were from um, all segments, design, building, construction, retail, manufacturing. If you were to have all those segments redo this thing as of today, only three months later from when this was done, I'm going to I'm going to suggest that all of these would be lower for the expectations for um, uh, for the quarter for what they expected would happen. Um, yeah, expected expected sales growth. Sorry, so I I can't remember when this actually was done. This um, report it probably says in here um, I participated in it. <coughs> Excuse me, but I think it, maybe it was done mid quarter two or early quarter two, I don't remember. So maybe it's a little older than I, than I thought. They've obviously put a lot of, a lot of um, effort into this to get this, um, you know, put, put together. So kitchen bath market index. Um, well, <laughs> so, so that's pretty, you can see it's pretty obvious. Um, one of the words that uses in this report is static, that the market is static. I'm glad that they're not using the word st um, stagnant inflation. Um, because I think that hopefully we, hopefully guys, we cleared that hurdle of not having stagnant uh, or stagflation. Sorry, the word stagflation, meaning prices are higher and they're not coming down and, and, and the market can't purchase at that rate. And so now you're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. So, but um, we are definitely in a static mode, at least for the time being. So these are just some health indexes here on this. Now, if you're a member of NKBA, you can get access to this report. Otherwise, you can purchase it. I think it's like, I don't know, 1500 bucks or something on, on the NKBA website. Um, okay, so here's you're seeing um, from quarter one of 2020, you see um, co the COVID dip here, right? And you see this is picking back up. And I, I was through this whole thing, of course, and the slowdown is simply because we all went home, <laughs> so to say. Um, and then all of a sudden it just clobbered. Now this, by the way, um, for my career, this was the worst period I've ever experienced for a lot of reasons, but a lot of reasons outside of our control. You know, the demand um, was higher uh, than the supply, the, the, the sh shipping costs, the availability of inventory, the, the lead times, right? It was just crazy. So, but as those things have kind of neutralized over the last, you know, um, in the last year, <clears throat> They've also suffered as well, right? And so um, now we're seeing a little bit of this. Now this is this is possible beginnings of a turnaround there, right? That's based on their projections, uh, based on what the, the the respondents said. And again, I would tell you if if you were to ask right now, I bet these are all lower than what was anticipated because again of the things that I mentioned um, that are happening in the marketplace. Now, sure, the Fed's dropped the interest rate, um, and they're going to probably drop it again this month. And my guess is maybe even a slight drop again in November. They may be a little bit careful on that just because they want to see what happens with the presidential election. I don't know. But I'm just saying that I think that you're going to see um, pretty static um, this month or, you know, this quarter again or third quarter for sure. And then into this fourth quarter that we're in now, I think it's going to see a slight uh, return um, after the election just because uh, a lot of things are unknown now instead of a guess. At least that's what we hope for, right? Um, we don't want a lot, a lot more unknowns. 
Um, okay, this is interesting because um, as I've talked to colleagues over the last few weeks and they've expressed what is going on in the industry, they've talked about cancellations and postponements. So um, I wish that they would separate. Well, this does have separation, sorry. So just so you know, in my, uh, you know, in my career, <clears throat> I've, um, as I look back to 2008, this would have been about 80% cancellations or 90% cancellations and, you know, whatever, 10 to 20% on the postponement. So, um, and that's not just the design, both construction and design. I mean, overall, in my opinion, they're really close, although, although you know, building constru construction lags behind design. It depends on what, what part of design you're talking about. But I think that that's what you're seeing. You know, it says here, of course, right here, if it's interest rates decline, there'll be pent up demand to initiate or complete projects before the holidays. Now, a lot of those are going to be your remodels. Not a lot of, you know, we're going to say, hey, we're going to build a, you know, a $3 million home. So we're going to start building that home in, 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 uh, in November, right? Um, this, again, is, is referencing the November elections, okay? So, um, again, I hope this is beneficial. If you like this, if I'm bringing some content and value here, please like my channel. I will do more of these if you feel it's good that you would like to at least hear my opinion on it, even though I'm not an expert in, in market, you know, the market or economy, the economy. I'm just sharing with you what I'm perceiving and, and my experience in the industry in, in relation to this report. So uh, please subscribe. And, and of course, uh, throw comments in here, the things you disagree with or, you know, with the report or me or the things that you do agree with and, and that you, you find um, you can relate to um, let's let's all benefit from this at least for those of us that are you know watching this if you're not watching it then it's no big deal right <laughs> but if you are watching it then hopefully we can uh, we can have a collaboration here um, all right I'm gonna just uh, this is the deferrals and cancellations um, similar reasons as the other one you don't see the cost of materials being in there which is interesting uh, well it says project costs so I would guess that that would you know include of course the cost of materials not just labor um, that's interesting. Other personal and family reasons. Look at that one. 24%. That's pretty high. I'm not sure what that would be from. Um, okay. So the lead quality, um, for like big ticket projects, um, you know, this is interesting. They're saying, you know, this is the percentage, um, higher profit margin projects. Um, what they're seeing as far as the change happening. Um, so yeah, the, the, the luxury industry, which is another, the, there's another segment here that's going to talk about the luxury industry. Changes in permitting. Now, I've seen this firsthand. I actually have a report that I follow for my region of the, of the, uh, of the nation. Um, and I would say just in my area alone, it's actually probably down more like about 30 to 40 percent um, from, you know, um, let's say this is, uh, Q2 sales. Um, I'm guessing that's compared to Q1. Um, I'm saying it's 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 dropped that much since Q1, <clears throat> maybe at least in, in Q3. So that's a good point. Again, <clears throat> I'm referencing the third quarter now. Um, what I've experienced the last few months compared to quarter two, um, it's dropped again. So I would suggest that that's gone down again. Okay. Um, so. Um, this is interesting, you know, in my market, somebody said that contractors want to use more ready to assemble cabinets. Yes, I think just simply for price purposes, it's hard to, com you know, it's, it's capitalism, right? It's hard to compete with that. Um, you're building, a, uh, doing a project, you can save 20% on uh, RTA cabinets over, say, a local factory or a semi-custom manufacturer um, sold through a local dealer, whatever the case may be. RTA um, saves money, at least in 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 projects where you can, you know, meet the needs of the project based on the, on the materials. If you're going to go for walnut or roof cut white oak or, um, you know, or hickory or something like that on a project, obviously you can't do that with RTA, at least not with um, overseas, uh, you know, or import RTAs, <clears throat> because at least I don't know of any that, that have those wood species yet included in their portfolio. Um, Project price increases. Um, okay, so this is going down, and I guess I'm going to suggest again it's going to go down again. Everybody, because they're going to be starting to be hungry for a little more work, they're going to uh, from the, the the front end of the industry to the back end of the industry, they're going to start lowering their costs. And I've already seen you know promotions and other things to try to generate that, as you probably have as well. Um, stabilizing material prices, yeah, it's it has it's stabilized quite a bit. Um, I won't spend a lot of time on that one though. Okay, I want to jump into a few other of these that I think. Um, the likelihood of an annual price increases. So um, what I think about this, well, 
I don't know that we're going to see an overall price increase. We might see a few things increase in price, but I think we're also going to see a, de a decrease in some prices, whether it be shipping or service based pricing or um, or other things that affect our bottom line in the industry. Either way, I think we're going to see the overall net be be less if it hasn't been this quarter than fourth quarter as we're, we see a rebound um, starting to take effect again. OK, again, the, the, there's pent up demand. It's got to come eventually. It's just a matter of when or how, um, not if um, that's at least my opinion. So now you now that's kind of a spoiler alert um, for the end of this. Um, my feedback toward the end. <laughs> so if you didn't want to watch the rest of how much longer this is going to take to do this video, that's that's my spoiler. OK, so 40% um, uh, expect positive revenues. Um, in 2024, I'm going to actually suggest that that's going to drop. That has already dropped quite a bit. However, looking into 2025, I believe that that's very realistic. It's going to have to be realistic to get to meet the demands that we've got. Okay, backlogs. Um, obviously, you see the decrease in backlog projects from quarter 20, 2022 early to, to fall of uh, 2024 that is not showing Q, quarter three. Okay, average um, quarter over quarter change in foot traffic. Yes. Again, incoming uh, demand leads, um, wishes, um, as I talk to contractors and builders in my market, um, you know, there are quite a few who are just simply um, building less right now because there's less requests right now. OK, uh, cost of goods ticked up um, again. I'm going to suggest that that goes down um, more in Q3 and again in Q4. And then we look at a jump, a slight jump or increase, probably Q1 or uh, maybe it will delay to Q2. I don't know of 2025, but I kind of sound like using all these terms like I know what I'm talking about uh, economically. Right. <laughs> I guess after saying them a few times. But but the basic idea here is knowing what I've gone through and seeing that the rebounds and the the dips or the, the dramatic declines in the industry I've seen over my career and the rebounds. I think we're, we're, we're due for a quicker rebound in this case, again, simply because there's, there's too much demand in the marketplace. Um, it's um, so, you know, a lot of these firms are trying to inventory less because, uh, because of the demand plain and simple, that's really not too, too hard. This is just evidence to, to confirm what is being suggested here already. Okay. Uh, lead times. That's interesting just to see some of those, you know, there's a, the, the biggest change here is ranges and stoves. Um, a, a lead time is increasing. And the biggest negative here um, is that refrigerators <laughs> is that interesting. The lead time has dropped by a week, um, you know, from uh, quarter one to quarter two. Kind of fascinating. So and here, here was the lead times at that point. So there might be something beneficial there to be aware of. Um, I bet that it again has changed. Uh, probably measurably if, in, into Q, core th Q, third quarter. There you go. I can't say it. <laughs> All right. So interesting to see renovation and construction, pro renovation completed projects grew by 2.3%. Um, again, I think that's going to see the growth is because um, as the demand decreases, then contractors can get more done in a quick, you know, in, in the same amount of time. So that's pretty straightforward. OK, I don't want to bore you with uh, too much stuff here. Hopefully there's just a few other things here that might be beneficial. I, I want to get to um, capital expenditures, excuse me. Yeah, you know, increasing, decreasing capital expenditures. Um, uh, you know, I, there's a lot of variety of reasons why that might happen. If you're doing a showroom, maybe if you're in the middle of a project, you've got to still spend some more money. If you're uh, planning an expansion, um, but you decided to put that on hold, or um, you know, increasing personnel or, or whatever it may be, then you're, you're doing that. Now, one thing I didn't mention is I'm an owner of a, of, of, of a company in this industry as well. Um, I actually got a couple of, um, I'm an owner in a couple of uh, businesses in this industry. And so I'm seeing it from that angle as well, not just as a designer. Um, so now this is again, approximately half are expecting renewed growth in 2024. I'm gonna again suggest that's pushed back again. So sorry to keep you know beating a, a drum here, the same drum, but I just wanna mention, um, mentioned that I'll just show something out here to California, the biggest market in the nation, uh, all, the biggest market in the world for that matter, uh, it says here, the, the middle market is cautionary demand is hot in the upper market. Yes, I would agree with that. Um, Southwest where I'm at, um, new high end homes are 80% of our business right now. Okay. Yes. 
that's very strong. And then, and then of course, the multi-units, extremely strong because um, the investors are willing to invest in properties that can be rented until they can be sold or, or rented long-term in their portfolio. Okay. I won't go through each of these markets, but it's kind of neat how it breaks it down based on some states, which are large economies all by themselves, as well as regions. Um, it gives you information on those. Okay. All right. A couple more things. We're almost there, guys. So um, here's the respondents. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and, and how they weigh um, based on the conditions in the marketplace, future business conditions, health of the industry, et cetera. Um, pretty thorough um, metrics, I think, that these guys use for what they're doing. And then the demographics of the clients, you know, um, who's purchasing right now. This is uh, slowly evolving as this generation um, continues to age and graduate into the next life. <laughs> and then the baby boomers will be here in the next, you know, 10, 10 to 15 years. Um, Gen X and millennials will be the dominant part of what's purchasing. And so pay attention to their buying cycles or buying interests, you know, and so forth. Um, luxury. This is interesting too. I, <clears throat> if I did my math right, um, Q2, um, you know, if, uh, I think it was 35% right here of the marketplace is, uh, well, I'm sorry, over 30% there. Okay. I'm not saying this right. 35% of all projects are luxury. Okay. I may not be saying this right anyway. So there's a large percentage of the marketplace that is getting, um, is doing luxury projects right now. Um, it's pretty interesting how that demand is happening. Um, so they're, they're just kind of di di disclaimers here saying wh whether or not they should or should not, you know, be these market conditions, can, lots of market conditions can change the results of the report. Um, I'm just going to end here. Um, kudos, you know, a huge round of applause for this team from, um, uh, John Burns, sorry, I was looking for a reference to make sure I've seen it right. John Burns, Research and Consulting. Um, good work, guys. Um, the thing, guys, I guess I'd end the report with saying is, is if I were you, I'm, I'm planning to just hold tight for the next about two to three months. Um, so basically through the end of the year, we're gonna, I'm going to see a slight rebound, I think, um, in mid to late November, early December. But then, of course, Christmas holidays always affect the demand and activity in the marketplace. But I would say that we should see a substantial resurgence in activity somewhere between mid-January and mid-February. Um, and it may be pretty hot and heavy and hard to, to, to keep up with um, based on what, what I know, what I can see. So I hope you liked it. If you liked it, you know what to do. Thanks for watching. Take care.